a couple of simple wooden gates passed by thousands of people every day. But behind them is a wonderland of, of love and hate and bravery and magical things. Let's go through them and explore. We are now in the New London Road Nonconformist Cemetery. It was designed and built by five businessmen from Chelmsford who had a vision of making Chelmsford a much more interesting and attractive place. This was the culmination of all their hopes and dreams. The five men, um, they, caught, they formed themselves into what's known as the Chelmsford Company. Let's now start our walk anti-clockwise round the cemetery. And the first one we come to is the very first person to be interred in this cemetery, Lionel Fenton. Um, he was the son of the person who designed the cemetery. James Fenton was an architect and designed many things in Chelmsford, including the Chelmsford and Essex Hospital. But the first grave in here was his young son, Lionel. The next grave after that is Mr. Frederick Wells, a well-known gentleman. Um, he founded the YMCA in Chelmsford, owned a very big um, brickyard and uh, lumber yard where the bus station now stands. Mr. Frederick Wells. Frederick owned the brewery in, in Duke Street, um, Wells and Perry Brewery, um, a very big uh, producer of uh, wines and spirits and beers. Um, it's now the lion, or was the lion and lamb, and now is a building site. We're now going on to the grave which most people who visit the cemetery are interested in. It's Joseph. Joseph was a slave in, in North America and escaped from New Orleans in 1861 and made his way to Chelmsford. He met um, a widow, Sarah, Sarah Farrow, and they lived together with her five of her seven children, and then they had three of their own, twins who died within a matter of six months, and an elder daughter, Sarah. continue our walk to a most beautiful art of stonemasonry. It's a simple cross. We are now here standing in front of the old rugged cross. A beautiful example of a stonemason's art. It really is a simple grave which is really outstanding in this cemetery. It's no one special but it really is a work of art. I'd like to show you a bit more detail of it. If you look at the carving on the top of the cross, it's carved into there. There are ivy leaves, um, all different decorations. There's a knot there. It's, it really is a fine piece of uh, the stonemason's art, mounted 
in a small collection of stones with the name of the deceased at the very bottom on the plinth. Wonderful, I enjoy that one. Right, moving on to the next frame, George Saltmarsh. Uh, one of the principal builders in Chelmsford, he probably built more houses in Old Molsham than any other builder. He also was involved in the building of the Chelmsford and Essex Hospital, or the infirmary as it was called in those days. He had brothers um, who were in, involved in uh, market gardens and they had a green grocer's shop in the high street. So George Saltmarsh, well respected, well thought about, but a person who didn't attract publicity or any praise. Just a nice, nice man. And this is why he's buried in a fairly simple grave, unlike his peers. Simple man. Moving on, Brilliant. we move into Copland territory now, which is, seems to be dominated by one name, the Coplands. Solicitors are one of the movers and shakers of Chelmsford. He's also a member of the um, Chelmsford Company. An unusual story about him. When he died, he's buried in an elm coffin. That in turn was placed in an oak coffin, which in turn was placed in a lead sheath coffin, and then interred in a brick mausoleum. Rumour has it, his wife didn't want him to get out or he didn't want to get anyone else to get in there. But that's just one of the stories. He's buried with his young son um, who was killed uh, trying to rescue a person in difficulties in the sea off Orton on Nays. They're interred in there. Unprofessionally, it's the Milbank family. Nice and clean. We don't know a great deal about them, but there seems to be an awful lot of them in there. Nice and clean, look beautiful. Good professional job. It would be nice to think that as a result of this video, this would set a trend because there are so many graves in here could do with a little bit of TLC. And if anyone has a relative they know in, in this graveyard, all it requires is hard work, some water, probably a, a light brushing, and restore the grave to what it looks like, what it should be. And it's easily done and doesn't cost a penny. So Mr. Milbank has um, set an example. If anyone's watching and would like to follow that example, please do so. If anyone is interested in that, there is running water here. There's a tap just by the entrance. Um, so there's no problems about transporting water or to come here and do it. An easy job, quickly done, but the benefits are magnificent. Move on now to a grave which is, to my mind, unusual. We now come upon a grave, it's a service grave, one of the Commonwealth War Graves um, stones. And to my mind, it's very unusual. It's a soldier. Uh, he used to work in Chelmsford in the co-op um, on nothing special job, but then um, did it extremely well and was promoted to be a, an area manager in Folkestone. In 1917, Kitchener called and said, we need you. So he volunteered and joined the army. Had his training with the Royal Army Medical Corps and was sent to the military hospital in the Curra in Southern Ireland. Unfortunately, he contracted cancer of the stomach and whilst on the operating theatre, he died. He was brought back here for burial. But the unusual thing is that at his funeral, the band of the Yorkshire Regiment were playing and there was also a firing party over his grave when he was actually interred. Very unusual for a soldier who had uh, not died in combat and was nothing special, just a private. And um, one wonders why um, he 
he um, deserved this supreme um, salute from the army. Perhaps it was a PR job. Perhaps the army wanted to show how we treat our soldiers who die. One will never know. Never know. We're now moving on to um, quite an interesting item. It's not just a grave, it's something special. Um, we are coming to the grave of Isaac Perry, who was the partner of Frederick Wells, and they both own the uh, big brewery. He was a great benefactor in Chelmsford, very popular man. But the very interesting thing about it is there's a tree growing next to him, which is an unusual tree. It's called a Turner Oak. It was named after a horticulturalist, an Essex horticulturalist, in about 1740, uh, Spencer Turner. He crossed a English oak with a Mediterranean oak, and the result is an evergreen oak. Um, it doesn't shed its leaves, they turn, turn a different color, but uh, it doesn't shed its leaves. It's a beautiful tree. It is a, if I was a young lad, I'd enjoy climbing that tree. Wonderful. There's a fine example here. There is an example of it in Kew Gardens and the Royal Horticultural Society and Berlin, Berlin uh, Horticultural Society also have a, uh, an example of it. I don't know if there's any more in Essex, but it's a beautiful tree. Wonderful. Now we come to the grave of Mr. Perry. Um, it's one of these, you'll notice it, it's in the corner because he was a member of the Chelsea Company and they had a pride of place and a free grave at the time. So um, he got a freebie in the corner where he wanted, but unfortunately it's rather overgrown at the moment. What we see here is his um, Beautiful brick-built um, and stone grave, but it's so overgrown, I'm not going in there. Thank you very much indeed. Moving on, we come to a grave, which is very unusual because you can't see it, but it's there. It's a doctor's grave. Now, on the tours, we always say, always prime the children, and they say, Doctor Who? Yes. It's Doctor Who's grandfather's grave. It's Charles Pertwee, who was the grandfather of Doctor Who, John Pertwee. Charles Pertwee, who was an architect in Chelmsford. Uh, a reputation of a workaholic. He never took time off. He worked six days a week continuously. On the seventh day, he rested and went to church. He was a very keen uh, Baptist. Uh, he was also a school gardener and was uh, involved in lots of other charities. Unfortunately, we can't see it because it's obscured by an ivy. And it's a very rare ivy. It grows only in one place in Essex, and that's here. And only in three places in East Anglia, actually. But it's a rare ivy. We now move on to a grave of a, a little boy who didn't do what his mother told him. And it's an unusual grave in that it's got a photograph of the boy. Here he is, Mr. Ralph Luckin Smith. Um, the Luckin Smiths, very famous family in, in uh, Chelmsford. He uh, was the son of Luckin Smith, which was a very well known firm of grocers in Chelmsford and in outlying Malden. Burnham, etc. Um, grocer shop, which where Waterstones now stands. But Ralph um, died because he disobeyed his mother. His mother said, please don't scratch that pimple on your lip. He did. And two days later, died from septicemia. Poor lad, but he was, um, he was being trained to take over his father's business but only 17 when he died. Now moving on, we move, go to 
a most unusual name, actually. Um, we pointed out because it's a it's a surname I've never seen, neither seen or heard before. Footy, uh, <laughs> absolutely unusual. This is the most unusual name I've ever met, Footy. I, I, I must say I've never ever heard the name beforehand. But uh, we always point it out because it makes a change. It's different. Moving on to the last one now, which is a lady, a, Gally, a Gallywood lady, um, a poet, Mary. Chaplin. Um, her, her husband was a farmer in Gallywood and she was the Gallywood poet. Um, unfortunately her grave stone is extremely well hidden in the bushes. It's overgrown terribly. We have just scraped away the undergrowth and found an unusual thing that although her name was Mary, on the gravestone she is listed as M. A. Chaplin, which may have been the name she used on the, her poems, but it's something which uh, deserves a bit more research. <laughs>